Hello, come in and have a seat. What can I do for you? Professor, my friends and I have been wondering about something. Maybe you can help us. Oh, what's that? Well, back in our introduction to psychology course, when we studied learning, we heard about Dr. John Watson and his little Albert experiment. Yes, what would you like to know? Well, what he did seemed cruel to me. And we remember reading that no one knew what ever happened to little Albert. Yes. That is what is in your textbook. It has always made me sad. I have read that some people say what Dr. Watson did may have ruined little Albert's life. Maybe he became a criminal. Or, maybe he went crazy. It just seems so unfair what Dr. Watson did to that poor little baby. How long ago did that happen? It was in late 1919 and early 1920 that Dr. Watson did his experiment. And some would say it was not even an experiment, but more of a demonstration. Wow, was it that long ago? Yes, it was so long ago that motion pictures were in their beginnings back then, so filming anything was unusual at the time. So, the film of such a demonstration is very rare. Perhaps that is why it is so well known. It is really interesting that you happen to ask about little Albert now. Oh, why is that? Well, because I recently read that some researchers believe they have tracked down what happened to little Albert. Really? I want to know what happened to little Albert. Can you tell me? If you have some time now, I can tell you. It will only take a few minutes to give you a short version of the story. Yes, I don't have a class for an hour or so. I can't wait to find out what happened to little Albert. Okay, let me tell you the basics of what they discovered. As you know, ever since Dr. Watson filmed his demonstration with little Albert, we were told that little Albert and his mother moved away, before his fear could be reversed. Yes, I remember reading that in the book. No one knows why they moved away either. So, as a result, there has been a great deal of speculation about what happened to little Albert, some very extreme. Yes. I have seen some YouTube videos where people suggest that perhaps little Albert became a mass murderer. Or a killer. Because of what Dr. Watson did to him. Yes, I have seen some of those videos too. Well, it seems like finally we have a good idea of what happened to little Albert. Tell me more. We owe this all to Halbeck, a professor at Appalachian State, and Sharman Levinson, a professor at American University of Paris. With some assistance from Gary Irons and a great deal of work from the students of Professor Beck. Evidently it took them about seven years to track down the information, and it wasn't easy. Just think about it, Watson filmed his demonstration about 90 years ago. It all started when Professor Beck's students came to him to ask if he would help them try to find out what happened. So, it got started by the students? That is really cool. Yes, and it wasn't easy. They ran into many problems along the way. First, they didn't even know the exact date that the original demonstration was done. Second, they didn't know if Albert was actually his real name. Third, Watson never reported the name of Albert's mother. Finally, Watson burned all of his personal papers before he died so they could not check his original notes for clues. So, how did they do it? The first step was to determine when Albert was born. Then maybe they could trace down birth records of some kind. The clue about when Albert was born came from them being able to track down the date of the demonstration and filming as occurring in late 1919 they determined that based on when the film equipment was purchased because there were no other records available. Watson gave Albert's age at the time. And Watson also had reported that Albert's mother worked at the Harriet Lane home on campus at Johns Hopkins University where he taught. But after much searching they found that Johns Hopkins University, the hospital, and the Harriet Lane home did not have any records from that long ago. Luckily, 1920 was a census year and they were able to obtain census records. The census showed that there were three women listed on the census at the Harriet Lane home with the job that Albert's mother had. Through birth records they found that one of those women had given birth to a baby boy on March 9, 1919. That would make the baby about the age of little Albert at the time of the demonstration. The mother's name was Arvilla Merritt. 
The baby's name was Douglas. But there were no further records on her anywhere. And they thought they would never find out anymore. So, little Albert's real name was Douglas? At first, they were not sure if this was the correct baby. But, yes, now it appears that little Albert's real name was Douglas. Douglas Merritt. Why did Dr. Watson call him Albert B? Perhaps it was just to protect the baby's and the mother's identity. But we will never know for sure. Remember, Dr. Watson burned all of his personal papers before he died. So, it will remain a mystery, forever. I can understand protecting his identity. Can you imagine how the media would have bothered him as he grew up? So, what happened next? Well, once again they thought their search had ended because they could find no records of Arvilla Merritt anywhere. But then from the birth certificate for Douglas they noticed that her maiden name was Arvilla Irons. When they searched under Arvilla Irons they found that she had an older child by the name of Maurice, who she had left with grandparents to raise. Maurice grew up and had two sons of his own and they were able to contact one of them, by the name of Gary Irons. Wow. So, they found a living relative of little Albert. I mean Douglas. What did they learn from him? Well, Gary Irons knew that his father had a brother and he even had a picture of him as a baby. Did the picture look like little Albert from the movie? It was not a perfect match, but it was close to what we see in the film of little Albert. Babies can change appearance a great deal when they are little and the film of Little Albert is not very clear. But they are very similar. Professor what happened to him? Did he turn out okay? Well, the story does have a sad ending. But it doesn't seem to be because of anything Dr. Watson did. After leaving the Harriet Lane home, Arvilla went to work to care for a woman who was sick at the time. The woman died in 1924 of meningitis. Unfortunately. Douglas died on May 10, 1925 of hydrocephalus, a condition that could be caused by meningitis. But no one knows for sure what caused his death. So, the stories of him growing up to become a criminal or going crazy aren't true? That appears to be the case. And there was no evidence that R. Villa was outraged by the treatment her son received from Dr. Watson as some have speculated. It seems that all of the stories from over the years seem to just be folk tales. Wow. That is a sad ending. Yes, little Douglas only lived six years. And it took the investigators longer than that to learn his story. They even found his grave in a church cemetery. The headstone reads, Douglas, son of our Villa Merritt, March 9, 1919, to May 10, 1925 and his mother had the following inscription on the headstone too. The sunbeam's smile. The zephyr's breath. All that it knew. From birth to death. Thank you for telling me what happened to little Albert. Even though it has a sad ending. I'm glad you told me. You are very welcome.